bees produce all types of fruit and seed. If you want to be a good beekeeper, you got to be able to take a sting. Just one stack is a colony. The royal jelly is really good for you. Without bees, our food would not be as dependable as it is. It also masks the, the chemical communication within the hive. But each stack should have one queen. One box of honey is about 60 pounds. The nutritional value of the beehive to a bear is the grubs. My name's Dallin Mason, and I am a beekeeper. Bees think that there is a, you know, a fire nearby and then they have to evacuate. They have to have a blood sugar to fly. So everybody goes and eats what they can. And if they have to escape and evade the fire, then they, they're ready to fly. And also mask the, the chemical communication within the hive. Bees make honey to store over winter months to keep their, their hive warm. The honey is a carbohydrate, and so they eat it to burn energy to keep the, the, the hive at a temperature where they require. The third box high is where your honey is gonna come in. These two are kind of the brood chambers, and this is what we will take when harvest time comes. I harvest twice a year in May and then also in September. One box of honey is about 60 pounds. Bees are really good at pollinating, help procreate another season of flowers. The queen will last one year, maybe two if you're lucky. The lifespan of these bees is gonna be six weeks. The pollen would be their protein diet and the nectar would be their carbohydrate diet. What defines a colony is one queen, brood and eggs, and just comb. It's really amazing how much a little bee can work and then produce hundreds of pounds of honey. So as this one fills up with honey, I'm gonna come in and add a box and keep stacking it for as high as, as, as much honey as they produce. In a nutshell, I move my bees periodically and I go to farmer's markets and sell the product in bottles and also sell honey in bulk to bottlers, honey bottlers here locally. This one is a feral colony, so they, they didn't build on these frames. So this is kind of like free comb. It's not built into the frame, it's kind of built on alongside it. You see how it plays like that? So I see eggs in here. That means that there's a queen. Okay, this queen, elongated ab abdomen, she has all of her eggs stored inside of her for her life. They can make their own queen if you give them an, if you give them a fertilized egg. The queen's pheromone suppresses the egg production of the lane, of the workers. So once she's gone, that they can now produce unfertilized eggs to keep the gene pool going. Yeah, they are dwindling. We have less and less each year. It's harder to find vegetation for them to feed off of and disease and mites and commercial and agricultural practices are making our numbers hard to stay afloat. You know, climate change is changing the environment and changing patterns of foliage and making less and less food for the bees. Our development and progression is taking up their land. And then also our practices in agriculture and just residential living Killing weeds is not good for the bees because those weeds are what the bees are feeding off of. I got an extra hive tool, whoever wants to play beekeeper. <laughs> if you want to be a good beekeeper, you got to be able to take a sting. You know, unless you're deathly allergic, it's, it's a pain that goes away. I made some leggings, makeshift leggings for him because he had black shoes and we didn't want to get, get him stung. You get to feel that pain and that you know that you're, as I almost got stung right now. 
they'll start grabbing your hair and pulling on it. Try to get towards your neck, so. If you are allergic, please carry an EpiPen all around with you at all times. Put this down, go behind you, bring it back in front of you. But if you're not, you know, take a bite, take a sting every once in a while. It's good for you. Here's some bees hatching. Look at these young ones crawling out of their hole. See how furry he, she is? She's just crawling out and hatching. This one is chewing out of its its capped cell. That one just that one just hatched. It's all furry. We got other ones. See this one starting to uncap. Wanted to hatch, so this is a hatching frame. It's almost like a meditation. It's almost like Zen gardening. When I'm in the hive, I'm in a in a almost a, a trance. I'm hearing buzzing. It's almost like an uplink. I'm just I'm in a zone. This is what bees are foraging on right now. This is a mesquite grove. When I say this is mesquite honey, it is mostly mesquite honey because that is the predominant blossom at the time. But there is a blend of other things in that. You have little mallow bushes, little fillery stuff on the ground. So there's other types of pollens that get in with the honey that is mixed with the honey. So. On a big rainy year, we have a lot of mallow blooming with the mesquite. It's going to make that mesquite honey taste different than on a dry year without the mallow. Yeah, the mesquite produced the nectar, and the nectar has a different characteristic of flavor. Honey that you buy at the store is a mix of all the beekeepers' honeys. They get big thousand gallon tanks and honey from five or six beekeepers, and they all mix it together. I don't think people realize how much their food depends on beekeeping. The vast majority of what's in the grocery store has some connection to beekeeping, either from seed or directly production of the fruit. Even the beef that you eat is fed alfalfa, and that alfalfa is seeded by bees. So even the meat that you eat has a connection to the bees. If we can eat, find a queen cell, I can dare you guys to eat a queen cell. The queen larva, that's what they eat in, they eat in Asia and China. That's a power move right there. Is it actually good? Yeah, the, the royal jelly is really good for you. A lot of people also have misconception of what bears do. They think that bears are eating the, the honey, but when bears are going into a hive, they're eating the protein, they're eating the larva, the grubs, and the honey is just a flavor. It just makes it sweeter, you know? But the, the nutritional value of the beehive to a bear is the grubs. So this, this frame right here, I'll show you is a brood frame, maybe. See there's pollen, you yeah. see the pollen colors? That's yeah. the pollen cells. Of course the honey is up here. The honey's kind of the, the shiny liquid, right? The shiny liquid, yeah. yeah. And the pollen's the yellow stuff? The pollen's the yellow stuff, and then the little white specks, it looks like a small grain of rice is an egg. I don't know anything else. I, uh, it's just something I will always do. If I don't do it professionally, it will be also be a hobby for the rest of my life. Being out and seeing the things that I see really makes my life fulfilling. It taught me patience and to uh, enjoy every moment of life.